Hi, I'm Cantor Farron Cates Rudnick, and I would like to begin today's webinar with a story. In 1937, a 17-year-old was leaving Germany for America. The young man was deaf. He was not born deaf, but lost his hearing after contracting meningitis at age three. This young man was particularly bright and resourceful. As he was preparing for his journey, he knew that arrival in America with a discernible disability would only result in a one-way ticket back to Germany. The young man decided to take lip reading classes so that when he arrived, he could read the lips of those speaking to him. He was successful in fooling the immigration officers, ensuring his safe escape from Nazi Germany. This courageous and smart young man was my grandfather, my hero, and the reason that making the Jewish community inclusive is so important to me. By the time I was born, my grandfather was also physically disabled from the onset of multiple sclerosis. As far as I knew as a child, there was nothing different or abnormal about people with disabilities. This inclusive understanding, drilled into me from birth, is what has helped to guide me in the work that I do. I am currently the cantor at Temple Bethel in Northbrook, Illinois, where I have been since my ordination from the Debbie Friedman School of Sacred Music at the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion in New York in 2013. Prior to cantorial school, I was a public school music teacher where I had the privilege of working with students with disabilities ranging from ADHD to Down syndrome. And as a teenager, I worked one-on-one -on -one with a young man with autism in the religious school. It seems only fitting that helping to make the Jewish community a more inclusive community is a large piece of my work as a cantor. Though the Jewish community has made great strides in general towards being inclusive on many levels, people with disabilities still remain a marginalized group who sit on the periphery of the community. As cantors, we have the opportunity to affect change in every aspect of our communities. We have the unique joy of being with our youngest and oldest congregants on a regular basis, whether we are working with the preschool, having a bar or bat mitzvah lesson with a student, doing pastoral work, being present for a life cycle event, or working with the adult choir. We have the opportunity to work with a variety of people and therefore a variety of learners. And if we are working with a variety of people in a variety of settings, we must be as prepared as possible to make everyone feel welcome, to feel that they are in a safe space, and to know that we have some understanding and knowledge of how to best help them become a part of the Jewish community. One thing that we should be mindful of is the many areas of congregational life in which we may work with somebody with a disability or find a need to be more inclusive. Let's begin with worship in our communities. One of the biggest areas that cantors can affect change for those with disabilities is in worship. From our regulars on Shabbat to those we only see on the high holidays or for a yard site, we have the opportunity to offer worship opportunities that will reach all people. While music might be a great outlet for some, it might create problems for someone with a sensory disability. Consider a different room format or a different sound system option to combat the effects loud singing and loud instruments may have on someone with a sensory disability. You should also consider a different room setup for those in your community with hearing disabilities. Create a space where the line of sight is always towards you and the sign language interpreter or visual aids. Provide accessible seating. Provide readers. Create your own seat door. Position ushers at each entrance for members and guests with physical disabilities. Offer varying musical moments, some with louder instruments, others with quiet meditative music for those who respond to one or the other. If you are offering a worship opportunity specifically for families with special needs, create a social story ahead of time and send it out to the families who are planning to attend so they all feel comfortable walking into the synagogue. Use musical instruments, dance, make the experience one of full body. Create a flow chart of the service, keep healthy snacks in the back of the room, provide earplugs, provide fidget toys, and provide a quiet room with activities for those who may need a break. Most importantly, provide a positive worship experience for all those in your community. Another area of congregational life 
where cantors can have a huge influence with including people with disabilities is bar and bat mitzvah preparations. It's easy to think only in terms of the student, but what about a family member with an aliyah who may have a disability? Or what about the guest who may have a hearing disability or a need for a large print or braille C door? And then, of course, there is the training of the bar bat mitzvah student, him or herself. There are many ways that we can prepare for working with our students and their families. The first and most important is to ask questions. Before the bar bat mitzvah, ask the family if someone will need the lift up to the bima, or if somebody will need wheelchair space or the hearing loop turned on. Asking the questions will not only make the family feel welcome and that their synagogue community truly cares about their needs, it will let their guests know that they are welcome in your community at any time. And if you're asking questions about guests, why not ask questions about your student? Before you start working with your student or the assigned tutor begins, ask the parents to fill out a form that best describes the type of learner that their child is. Ask about he or she learns best and if there is anything in particular that you or the tutor should know before starting to work with their child. Consider alternative options for the child who may not be verbal, but may be able to use technology or art skills to depict his or her Torah portion. Or perhaps use another room in the building for a child with severe anxiety or another disability that may make your sanctuary not the best option. I have found the following phrase to be very reassuring to parents and children as they prepare for their bar or bat mitzvah. No one child is the same. No one person is the same type of learner. So no two bar or bat mitzvahs look the same. We do not try to fit our students into a box, but rather adapt the service and requirements to fit each individual student and his or her needs. This is only the beginning. You may find that your students or members of their family need more individualized accommodations, and for those, treat each as a valued member of your community and do what you can to make sure that the bar or bat mitzvah experience is a positive experience from start to finish. Beyond our responsibilities with B'nai Mitzvah students and their families, cantors work with a variety of other learners within the community. It may be easier to identify disabilities with our younger learners. For example, those younger students in our preschools or in our junior choirs. We may notice the student who can't stand still during choir rehearsal, or the student who just can't stop him or herself from talking during the weekly Shabbat celebration in the preschool, or the student who has trouble communicating and articulating his or her thoughts. And what about the young members of the community who appear to be a disruption during services? With our youngest community members, we have an opportunity to make their experience better by noticing the differences and responding appropriately. We know that for a variety of reasons, some parents are reluctant to open up about the needs of their children. However, even without knowing all the details, cantors can be a first line of defense and response. Judaism is incredibly multisensory. And we can use that to focus and work with our younger learners with different learning abilities. For the preschool student who can't seem to stop talking, set boundaries. Set aside special cantor student time for sharing and invite that student to help you sing during the weekly Shabbat celebration. For the young member of your junior choir who can't stop moving, ask him or her to help add small choreography to the music selections or invite him or her to have jobs during rehearsals such as passing out pencils and music. Music can be a great tool for the student who has difficulty communicating. Music can express that which words cannot, and for a child with a disability that hinders communication and articulation, music can be a great device, a way to help that student find a way to express him or herself. Use technology and resources to help reach all of your younger students. Purchase a fidget package, a package with various sensory hand toys for a student who may seem disruptive but just needs a little something to help keep him or her focused. Use technology, recordings for example, for the student who has a visual impairment or other multisensory techniques such as kinesthetic learning for students struggling to learn Hebrew and prayers. Invite those students who, during religious school tefillah, may seem a bit too antsy to help you lead prayers or to help you teach the class how to sign the Shema as your hands will be too busy playing guitar and you will need the help. 
We can reach our youngest community members with and without disabilities by being creative and understanding that a disability is not a hindrance, but an opportunity to learn and better work with our students. With our older congregants, the members of our adult choirs or in our adult education classes, it may be more difficult to identify learning needs. This is an area where we need to be hyper aware and sensitive of the variety of needs of the people we encounter. Some of our adult learners have social disabilities, some have anxiety disorders, some suffer from mental illness, while some may have physical disabilities. With the right attitude, we can make each person feel as if he or she has a place within the community. If someone in your adult choir has a physical disability, consider having the choir sing off the bima as opposed to creating a challenge and thus a barrier with a raised bima. Invite the choir members with anxiety to sing duets as a way to help him or her better deal with his or her anxiety and also show them the support of the community. If you are aware of an adult learner who has a visual impairment, consider a different room setup, larger print documents, or providing listening tools such as recordings of the class material or music. And most importantly, ask how you can better help the person. Some prefer to not have their disability highlighted by accommodations, but others in your community will be touched by your asking and will be honest about their needs and how they would like to become a more active member of the community. One of the adult groups in our communities that may often get looked over is our young adults with disabilities who may be in need of employment. A synagogue is a great environment for a young adult with a disability to get job experience. The reality is that people with disabilities, once given the opportunity, are prone to being more loyal employees. In a visit to my synagogue, Congresswoman Tammy Duckworth called attention to the fact that the majority of people with disabilities who are employed are less likely to take sick days and less likely to leave for other opportunities. This group of people is, in fact, better employees than most. What can we do in our synagogues to help this particularly isolated group of people? Take a walk around your building, both inside and out, and make a list of the small things that you can use help with. For example, does your community have a garden? There are many young men and women with disabilities who have an interest in gardening and the skills to help keep up with a community garden. It would be very easy to employ someone for a few hours each week to take care of that garden. What about the bulletin boards in your religious school that could use some sprucing? Or the closets that never seem to get organized past the first week of school? Do you need your music digitized? And what about Shabbat set up with the extra tables and chairs for the dinner in Oneg, or the food and coffee preparations for the weekly Torah study class or board meetings? What about inviting someone to come in during the winter to help make sure the floors stay dry and safe when snow gets dragged into the building? These are all small but important tasks in a synagogue that can provide opportunities to a young adult with a disability and will help that person to feel needed and useful and will also provide a spiritual home for that person and his or her family. Making your community more inclusive begins with one very important element, education. As cantors, we have the power to write bulletin articles, bring in great speakers and scholars, preach from the bima, and to lead by example. At Temple Bethel, we have made inclusion of people with disabilities a priority. In my two years with the community, we have formed an inclusion committee comprised of special education teachers, physical therapists, speech therapists, social workers, occupational therapists, and parents. This team works hard to make sure that our building and our programming is inclusive. This ranges from making sure our accessible doors work, to lowering mezuzot for people with physical disabilities, to hiring a sign language interpreter, to hiring a specialist for the religious school, to planning programs for families with special needs, and partnering with a local school for Jewish children with disabilities to share a classroom so we can better reach some of our families whose children might not learn as well in a traditional classroom. The changes have been remarkable and none of them has taken much more than vision and a dedicated group of people. Because we work with such a wide range of people in our communities, we should also do our best to educate ourselves by using resources online and within the community going to classes, and speaking with those who are affected by a disability. 
find ways to collaborate with colleagues, with community members, with parents, and find ways to create a welcoming, inclusive community. You don't have to be born with a disability to be affected by disabilities. Any one of us at any moment can get sick or be in a terrible accident that may leave us with a disability. Or any one of us may have a sibling, an aunt or uncle, or a child with a disability. Disabilities affect us all on different levels and in different ways. Let us work to bridge the gap that still remains between our communities and people with disabilities. Every Jewish person deserves a place within the community and a place to call their spiritual home. For more details or to talk about more ways that cantors can make the Jewish community more inclusive, please contact me.